All right, we're here at my tiny worm bin. And the last time we were in here, we fed on this side, strawberries and blueberries. In fact, that was a really good feeding. Too good of a feeding because I think the strawberries were meant for us to do shakes in. And the bubble wrap is looking good. I don't see any worms in it. And I think that's because I had it open for a little bit, but I see that they are eating some of the newspaper here. So it is sloped down like this. And when we left last, it was sloped down here. And that's because they've been eating the food. And I think because of a new experiment we're gonna do, I may put this in as some fresh bedding because we are gonna do a cornstarch versus pulverized oats experiment on the top because of a suggestion that I got from a commenter. And I just happen to have expired cornstarch. So hopefully I'll remember to put this back in here. Another thing I wanted to check was the moisture level because we have kept that bubble wrap on here for a couple weeks longer than I thought we would. And sure enough, we are very moist in here. So, you know, for the experiment, I think I'm going to keep it on just to keep it moist while they're going for the cornstarch and pulverized oats. But check out these worms. They are just gorgeous. Look at that color, that purple, dark color. These are red wigglers. This one was turned over, so he had a kind of a whitish belly. But just great worms in here. They seem to be extremely happy and doing really well. So this side over here hasn't been fed in probably about two weeks or more. It's been eight days since we were in here last. So I'm just going to kind of see what things are doing over here because this is the side that we're going to feed. But look at that. Any handful I pick up, there's just tons of worms in here. There's a little bit of these stringy stems from the baby's breath. So we'll see how that does. But even the cardboard shreds are getting eaten up. So that is really good. The bin is doing really well. And last time we talked about this bin being about halfway done. In fact, it's a little bit past that because we're about 104 days. And typically this bin will go somewhere around 175 days. But just, <laughs> just beautiful worms. I happen to think worms are beautiful. You probably do too if you're here at this channel. But I am just going to kind of air this out a little bit and I do that so we don't get any pockets of ammonia smells or fermenting. Keep this bin nice and airy for them. I'm only in here every seven to ten days so this is nothing compared to what they would be under in the wild. So let's go ahead and go over to the other side which is where we fed and see how it is doing. And that's right I put some of this stuff on top. I had meant to put it on the bottom. This is very odd, whatever this is. Almost looks like, I thought it was plastic, but I think it may be banana stem. So it's okay, it just was really shiny to me. Keep digging down here as we get closer to the strawberries and blueberries, and yep, we're getting more and more worms. Oh yeah, look at that. Just a ton of worms right there. Almost a worm ball. I bet you as we get closer to the food, there's just gonna be a lot. Now we started this bin with right around 600 worms. So we'll see if that's the carrying capacity of this bin or if we get more. And for this particular bin, it's a very tiny bin. I mean, it is only three gallons and probably only a gallon worth of volume in it right now. But I individually count out the worms. That's how I separate the worms from the castings. I only do that in this bin, not in my other bins. Check it out. Okay, there we go. Let's just kind of look at this and break it up as we go. Now I should have broken or I'm sorry squeezed the blueberries and I didn't but I think they were far enough gone that they were able to get to all of them and the only other thing that we might also find is maybe some strawberry tops but after eight days they really went for that. They really went for this feeding zone. Keep going through here and it was quite a bit Quite a bit of food, so I'm impressed. They are they are doing well. Good worms, good job in here. Let's get this corner. It's definitely more moist than I'm used to. You can probably see some of the glistening down here, but that's fine, nothing is pooling. So things are a-okay. All right, I'm gonna kinda push things over here so I can get to the other side, and that's where we're gonna feed. 
in our kind of ping pong feeding that we're doing here in this bin. I like how it's working. They're definitely transversing both sides and going across. We definitely saw more in this zone. And even though it was higher when we started off after our feeding, it got lower. So let's go ahead and set this up right here. I get a little buddy here on my finger, so I'll put that in. And right here, the executive producer, who is my lovely wife, let me know that this is probably the end of a rose stem. And I think she is right. That is definitely the end of a rose stem that we put in here several weeks ago. All right, let's get some bedding down. All right, so I always like to put some shredded cardboard down at the bottom of any feeding because the feeding has some liquid in it and then it will help to wet down this very dry cardboard shredding. And because this is probably about two months before we harvest, this may be the biggest bunch that I put in here until we harvest. Still probably put a little bit, but that is a lot. In fact, I'm gonna put even more. The executive producer said that she felt like it needed it because of the moisture, and I agree with her. And these shreds are, are really tiny. You get an occasional one like this, but they're even smaller right there. And I think this is a micro shredder. I've had it for about three years. I've got affiliate links, and it just swallows cardboard boxes. It's amazing. One time I saw on YouTube somebody putting their cardboard through a 12-sheet cross-cut shredder. So I tried it on mine because mine was already old, and it, it went through perfectly. So I've been using that for about two years. So oh, three-year-old shredder just actually tearing apart cardboard. All right, so here's what we had in mind for the feeding. Because they ate those strawberries and blueberries so well, they're going to get some veggies. We've got some broccoli, some cucumber. Both of those should go pretty quick. We've got a lettuce stalk and some tomato. And then we've got a bit of a slow food, which is this apple right here. So of all the food that I have in here, the apple is probably one that will take the longest. So let's go ahead and set up their feeding zone here. Just kind of put it all around and very liquidy. I freeze my food and then I let it thaw just a little bit on the counter while I'm waiting. And I like it to be a little bit still frozen just so any kind of insects or things won't land on it and lay their eggs. It is an indoor bin, so I don't really have any of that stuff in my house, but just in case. I like to keep my bins free of any kind of fruit flies or gnats, those kinds of things. But this is a really good feeding. They are going to just flock over here, I think. Man, I am off my game. Executive producer again saved me. She said, when is this supposed to go in? So this is the top newspaper that we had. And I'll just throw it in here with the food. No big deal. That might actually help them go after it quicker. I found that when the food is mixed with bedding, they really attack the bedding. In fact, with the top feedings of the dry food and worm chow, the pulverized oats, the worms just absolutely attack the newspaper that I have on top. So maybe we'll get a little bit of insight into if food does the same thing with them. And I am going to add our amendments right after this in addition to adding them on top. So the first amendment is pulverized oats. And I just like to sprinkle it lightly all over the food. Try not to mat it down or bunch it up too much because when water gets to it, it almost becomes like a concrete and the worms can't get in it. And then almost every time I feed, I give them some pulverized eggshells. And that is the grit that I use. And they use grit in their gizzards to grind their foods up. And it also is very helpful in the garden as well. All right, and the last amendment that I give them is used coffee grounds and this is just another food source for them so that looks like a really healthy feeding for them i'll go ahead and bury it up and this is just one of my three worm bins that i like to do videos on this is my tiny worm bin i also have an outdoor worm bin which is a 20 gallon worm bin and i do all kinds of good experiments out there that is my workhorse produces lots of castings and then i also have a vermi hut worm tower and that is just another unique worm bin, really great for beginners. So go ahead and check those two worm bins out. I've got playlists for both of them. And what we'll do now is we will set up for putting our amendments and starting our experiment on top. So I think what we'll do is we will do, they already have oats over here. So we'll do cornstarch on this side and we'll do oats on this side. And then we'll put the newspaper down and then we'll see how they do. Because I'm going to come in here every day 
and take a little bit of film to see how well they have eaten down the pulverized oats and cornstarch. So I'll probably be a little bit more graceful with the pulverized oats, and that is because I am right-handed. So let me get just, we'll pick the dividing line right there, and we'll give a good sprinkling, trying not to put too much on there. I think that will do it just like that. And then here's the cornstarch. It expired in December. And it's got kind of a lip here, so we'll see how well I do in putting this down. So, <laughs> uh, here we go. Okay, now I'm noticing that this is almost like a fine powder, whereas the pulverized oats is just a little bit more gritty. So I don't know if that will have an effect, but this cornstarch is absolutely way finer than I can get it in my blender. So... Here we go. I'm not doing too bad. I'm pretty proud of myself here, left-handed. But let's see. Maybe a little bit more cornstarch. Just trying to put the equal amounts on there, too. So maybe a little bit more. I say that, and then I'll probably dump a whole bunch out. But this should be pretty neat. This should be a pretty neat uh, experiment. And then maybe after this, if they go for the cornstarch, I might add both cornstarch and pulverized oats into one container when I feed. All right, so since we started a new experiment, I'm gonna put a new piece of newspaper down here, and then we will finish it off with our bubble wrap. So that should about do it. So hope you're all having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing well. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.